Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about some upcoming severe weather. We have a moderate risk of severe weather actually today, which is really, really concerning. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, we have obviously two days of big severe weather coming up for today and tomorrow, but when do you think our next severe weather event is going to be? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. First things first, let's just take a look right at our day one categorical outlook here. And as you can see, we have first off in the light green, it's our general thunderstorm risk. Typically just general thunderstorms happen within this area. Now, within the two darker green regions, that's where we get a marginal risk of severe weather. And this is where we expect some isolated severe weather to occur, but mostly just some really strong thunderstorms. The two yellow regions is our two slight risk regions, one there for the northeastern United States, and then one there for the plains. Uh, and these are where we begin to get some more scattered in severe weather, almost widespread uh, in some instances. And then we have that orange region there for Kansas and Nebraska that is our enhanced risk. And then we have the red area within there that is our moderate risk. And that is where we're the most concerned about. The moderate is the second highest risk level we can get. So that is actually quite concerning to say the least. Now here is our day one wind outlook. And this is all within 25 miles of a given location. We have 5% there within the two green regions, one there for the northeast again, and then one there for the plains as well. The two yellow regions is where we have 15% chance of damaging wind to occur. The red region is where we have a 30% chance of damaging wind. And then that purple or pink region there is where we have a 45% chance of damaging wind, almost a 50-50 shot within 25 miles of a given location for having damaging wind. That hatched area, you might see that little black hatched area, that is where we have a chance at even stronger damaging wind. They're indicating that region could have very strong damaging wind possible. The hail outlook is equally concerning here. We have two 5% regions there, again in the green. We have two 15% chance regions again there in the yellow. Then we have the red area, the 30% chance of hail, and then a 45% chance of hail in between Nebraska and Kansas as well there. Again, uh, for that purplish region, we have the hatched area again as well there for this black hatched area indicating two inch diameter hail or more could be possible. Now for the tornado outlook, this is also very concerning today. We have the two 2% 2 chance regions within 25 miles of a given location of seeing a tornado. We have the two 5% chance regions in the brown. And then we have a 10% chance region there in the yellow. That is a pretty elevated tornado risk. Uh, it's not every day you see a 10% chance. It's not even every day you see a 5% chance. Uh, so that is pretty significant to see that 10% chance region there. I do expect, unfortunately, there will be quite a few tornadoes throughout the day today. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the model guidance for this day one outlook. And then we're going to move straight into day two, which is almost equally as concerning as today. Now here we are taking a look at the high temperatures throughout the day today and as you can see we're expecting 80s uh, and 90s to be possible even some upper 70s there for Nebraska so most of these severe weather regions are going to be in the 70s through the 90s which is going to just be sufficient regardless and it's a very wide range but it really doesn't matter once you're above 70s it's it's just highly sufficient for severe weather regardless. We do see that dew points are going to be in the mid to upper 60s for most regions especially Kansas and Oklahoma there. Nebraska a little bit lower there. Uh, I'm kind of questioning whether Kansas or Nebraska will have the most severe weather. I'm leaning towards Kansas because of the fact that they're going to have much better uh, parameters there, in my opinion. Uh, once we look at that cape, which is a kind of combination of the temperatures and the dew points, it's convective available potential energy. It's basically thunderstorm food, uh, and they eat this up to build stronger and stronger and stronger. Uh, we have anywhere from about 1,000 to 4,000 amounts here, 4,000 being the purples, 3,000 being the reds, 2,000 being the yellows and oranges, and then 1,000 being the greens. So we have a wide variety of cape values there, but the reds and purples are very, very high. Our shear here is just going to be through the roof as well. Uh, we have a higher end shear event going on today as well. Uh, so it, it, all these parameters combined is just leaning towards a very concerning outlook, and I think that is why we have that moderate risk. Now, by the time we're taking a look at about 2 p.m. today, again, Wednesday, May 26 is the day I'm making this video, uh, there isn't really any thunderstorms going on yet. Uh, but by the time we reach about 4 p.m. or so, all these thunderstorms are going to fire up, as you can see, up and down uh, the plains, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, even a little bit of Wyoming and Colorado getting involved as well. These very potent thunderstorms are going to get underway rapidly. 
Uh, and then by the time we're taking a look at approximately 9 or 10 p.m. here on a still uh, Wednesday, obviously, uh, we do see that these storms have moved towards the more central regions of Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Still very, very potent looking by this point. And then by the time we're reaching about 1 or 2 a.m., these storms will still be ongoing. So this could last a little bit into the overnight hours. We're going to need to watch very closely for that because that does have significant uh, implications, obviously, uh, whether those storms are ongoing at night or in the day. Uh, that is a big difference. Now, by the time we're reaching about the a.m. hours tomorrow, I'd say sometime between 6 and 8 a.m. tomorrow on Thursday, May 27th, you can see these thunderstorms are just continuing on straight through the morning, and they're entering into Kansas and Missouri by the time we're reaching this hour. And that's going to bring us to our Day 2 outlook in just a moment, where we're going to take a look at what kind of risk level we're taking a look at for Day 2, and then we're going to walk through the modeled guidance all over again for Thursday, May 27th this time. All right, now here we are taking a look at that day two categorical outlook. And as you can see in the lighter green regions, again, we have that uh, general thunderstorm risk. Within the darker green, that marginal risk, the yellow region, the slight risk once more. And then again, that orange region is the enhanced risk. And that's going to extend basically through Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri, as well as a little bit of Illinois and Arkansas. This is another day that could be equally as bad as today is going to potentially be. Uh, and we could see a moderate risk upgrade, in my opinion. Whenever they make a big, big, big enhanced risk like that, you kind of are leaning towards possibly that upgrade. You know they're thinking about it. Uh, and in this case, I'm highly confident they are thinking about uh, giving us that moderate upgrade. And regardless, there's going to be probably some really bad severe weather. So whether there is or not, I don't want you to pay attention. Uh, I don't want you to not pay attention whether there's a you know, only if there's a moderate risk. It doesn't. That doesn't really make sense. It makes sense to be mindful regardless. Now, on day two, the wind outlook, we have a 5% chance. Remember, these are all within 25 miles of a given location. The two green regions there are 5% chance of damaging wind. The yellow region is a 15% chance, and then the red region is a 30% chance. And then again, that hatch area is where we expect damaging wind, very damaging wind, to be possible. The hail outlook here, again, we have the two 5% chance regions, the 15% chance region, and then the 30% chance region. We also have that enhanced risk area once more, uh, which is, again, indicating 2-inch diameter hail or more possible. The Day 2 tornado outlook is almost identical. Uh, we have a 2% chance of tornadoes within 25 miles of a given location within that green region, a 5% chance in the brown region, and then again, just like Day 1, a 10% chance there in that yellow region in between Oklahoma and Kansas. Obviously, a very concerning look there. Uh, now, our cape is going to be anywhere from... Uh, it could be a little bit higher, actually, here on day two on Thursday. As you can see, we have purples in through whites, which is indicating four to 5,000 cape is widespread through those purple and white regions. That is through the roof, and that might be the highest cape event we've had all year. And that leads me to believe there's going to be very large hail possible and uh, pretty, in, pretty extreme supercells uh, in the area whenever we have a super high cape event like that. Uh, the... The shear here is going to be behind everything, but it does look to be quite high, as you can see. Uh, those browns and reds are indicating the more moderate to high amounts. Uh, and those will be moving from west to east, and as they move into the area, tornadoes will become more and more of a possibility. Now, just to show you guys one radar frame here, just to kind of indicate what that storm mode could look like, it's looking more linear to me, honestly. As you can see, we have lines of thunderstorms from Texas up through Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri. This does not completely erase the, the ability for tornadoes to occur but it does lean me towards more of a wind and hail event uh, although i do think tornadoes are still a very large probability or a possibility there on thursday obviously anyway for our confidence tab today we're at a five out of six i'm feeling very confident but things could go a little bit differently with severe weather it is the hardest type of weather to forecast in my opinion uh, so that's why i'm at a five out of six and not a six out of six we did talk about day one and day two perhaps if i was only talking about day one i would have been at a six anyway for today's comment of the day i asked you guys uh, what do you think the upcoming pattern looks like? An anonymous sports fan said, I think a significant cooldown for the East is in order for late in the first week of June. And I really do think you're kind of onto something there. I do think it could occur a little bit earlier than that. I think we could close out May on a cold note, actually, for a few days and maybe enter into the first couple of days of June on a cold note. But I think we're going to warm up after that. So there is a little bit of a tweak there, but I do generally agree there. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lily Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, 
Michael Cotalesa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Vallejo, Garys, and John Felici, alongside Dwight Phelan as well. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Weather Top Dogs, Hair Farms 1, and Cat Bite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.